Okay, this is where I think argand diagrams gets really, really interesting. And it's where we talk about loci on an argand diagram. So you've actually already encountered loci at GCSE. And what they mean is they are basically a set of points and they possibly might form some line or region which satisfies some sort of restriction. Um, and we'll explain that a little bit more in the context of these argand diagrams. But the key thing is that they are a set of points that satisfy some kind of restriction. So, for example, the definition of a circle is a set of points which is equidistant from a fixed centre. Kind of makes sense. That is what a circle actually is. This is not a well-drawn diagram, but all of the points on this circle in theory, are a fixed distance from some particular centre. Fixed distance that is equal, hence it's saying equidistant there. OK, let's have a look at what I've got written here. I've said that the modulus of z equals 3. This means that the modulus of the complex number has to be 3. So what points does this give us on an Argand diagram? So this is the origin. I am wanting to say where are the points that would have a length of line three? Well, one of them could be here. It could be like three i, couldn't it? That would also have a length of three. One of them could be here on the real axis. That from the origin would have a length three. Minus three would have a length of three. These are what I'm talking about here. And also minus three i. These are four particular points, which all have a modulus of three. But there are obviously more points, for example, this point here, this point here, this point here, all of the points that go around in the shape of a circle. All of these points here are what would create, let's see if my circle tool will work. They will all have a distance of three from the origin. So what points does this give us on an Argand diagram? It gives us a circle, radius three, center, origin or zero zero and that's what we're going to be exploring quite a lot um, in this chapter so before we move on with the next bit and making things become a little bit more complicated we're going to do a right reminder of some of the algebraic sides of stuff because what i really like to do in this topic is jump between geometric interpretations and algebraic interpretations and what you're going to try and do over the course of this um, chapter, really, is to decide which of these you prefer. Personally, I prefer the geometric, but I'm going to be showing you both of these methods. So a quick reminder, let's say that our complex number Z is X plus I, Y. And we're going to try and remind ourselves how we find the modulus of this. Well, it's kind of like Pythagoras, isn't it? So the modulus, the magnitude of this would just be the square root of X squared plus Y squared. So we're going to have to do the modulus of z minus 3. So z minus 3, let's just quickly work out what z minus 3 is over here. So it would be x plus i y minus 3. Now what we'll do, we'll collect together the real part. So we've got x minus 3, and then the imaginary part is i plus y. So the real part is x plus y, the imaginary part is y. So when I would be finding the magnitude of this, I'd be doing Pythagoras to it. The real part is x minus 3 squared, and the imaginary part is y squared. Obviously, if these were just complex numbers like, I don't know, z equals 3 plus 4i, you know that to find the magnitude, you'd do 3 squared plus 4 squared square rooted. So I'm just generalizing this and saying it would be x minus 3 squared plus y squared square rooted. That was just an example, though, this 3 plus 4i one. So let's have a quick workout of this next one. Um, it's z plus 2 minus 4i. So that's going to be x plus i y plus 2 minus 4i. So I'm going to collect together the real and the imaginary parts. The real parts are going to be x plus 2, and the imaginary parts are y minus 4i. So if I was going to do Pythagoras to that, I would be doing the square root of x plus 2 squared plus y minus 4 squared. OK, now we're going to try and see if we can extend this into some more general kind of loci. So previously, we just looked at loci that looked like this. We just said that the modulus of z was equal to the radius of some circle. But I'm adding in this bit here where I'm subtracting z1. Now, what I'm going to note here is z1 is a fixed complex number.
And in this case here, well, not in this case here, just generally, this z is a general complex number. What I mean by a general complex number is like on this circle that I drew, the z that I have here is being represented by all of these possible complex numbers that I've got here. So when I have a look at this z, I'm saying that it can be any of those particular points, but this z1 is a fixed complex number that can't move like this one that I've got here. So what does z minus z1 equals r actually mean? Okay, well, I'm going to try the algebraic one, and then I'm going to explain it to you in a geometric way in just a second. So let's let z1 equal some complex number, and I'm going to call that complex number, let's give it, um, let's call it a plus b i. So this z1 that we've got here, it's coming a along and b i up there like this, okay? So if I'm going to do z minus z1, I would have x plus i y minus a minus b i, obviously subtracting both of these parts that you've got here. So I'm going to collect together the real parts, which is x minus a, and the imaginary parts, which is y minus b i. So I have this. Now, if I take the modulus of it, I'm going to be doing Pythagoras. So it's going to be the square root of x minus a squared plus y minus b squared. So I've dealt with the left hand side now. The left hand side, which is this, is going to be able to re be replaced with this. So let's actually do that. We're going to say that the square root of x minus a squared plus y minus b squared is equal to r. Now I can square both sides to get rid of that really annoying square root sign so that I have x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equals r squared. Now, if you haven't studied this from, I think it's chapter six in pure year one, what this actually is, is the equation of a circle. So this is a circle. It has radius r, which is indicated by the fact that it's equal to r squared. And the crucial thing is that the center is a b, which is indicated by the fact that it's minus a minus b. So in other words, what we've got here is it's going to be a circle from this definition of z minus z1 equals r. It is a circle, radius r, center z1, the fixed point that you've got. So if I was going to go back to this diagram, if I'm going to just quickly draw a circle on like this, that is going to be where the circle would lie. The radius of this circle is r, and its center is z1. That's what I've got written down here. So z minus z1 equals r is represented by a circle center x1, y1, with radius r, where z1 equals x1 plus i, y1. I did my example with uh, a and b up here. So you could just replace these with a and b, or you could do it with the x plus i, y kind of stuff. Okay. So um, let's just quickly have a look at this animation that I've got, which is on GeoGebra, because it's kind of like a neat way of having a look at this. So let's move A to a new location. This is the A is the part that I've got for Z minus A equals some kind of radius. So let's say that the radius is going to be 2.5 and I've got Z here. And that's the general point that can move. And you can see what's happening. As I move Z, the writing in blue says for the current position of Z, Z minus A, the modulus of Z minus A equals particular values, 3.7 here. Now, as I move towards A, it's going to get smaller. And actually, it gets to 2.5, which means it is part of the loci. It's actually meaning I want to include that in the set of points. So as I move Z away, this program has really cleverly recorded that that should be included as the loci. Over here, Z minus A's modulus is too big. It's 4.4. But as it gets closer, the modulus is 2.5. It's a distance of 2.5 away from A. And as I move it around, the computer program here is finding and recording all of the positions where my complex number Z is 2.5 away from A. So that's interesting. Algebraically, we were just like, oh, cool. It just tells us that it's the equation of a circle. 
But now I said something different. I said that this computer program is recording when my blue Z is a distance of 2.5 away from A. So I'm starting to talk about something a bit more geometric here. I'm talking about the distance between Z and A. Remember A is fixed, it can't move, or Z1 as we were calling it before, but Z can move. And when it's at 2.5 away from A, it is going to record it with a dot. So I'll put show the locus so you can see that that's what it actually is. And if I want to move A around to different places, you can see how its locus or it's also going to change, how the circle is going to move positions. And if I change the size of R, you can see how the circle's radius is going to change. So I started talking to you about some of the stuff to do with distance there. And I kind of want to explore some of those connections a little bit more because I think this is quite a useful way to think about what might be going on here. So I've got an example of z minus z1 equals 2. This complex number is z1 that I'm going to indicate on my argand diagram. And I'm going to indicate it with a little arrow like this, because I want to try and indicate that this is almost like a vector. I'm going to call this my z1 vector. Now let's ignore this bit over here for a second. Let's ignore the equals 2. Let's try and ask ourselves, what does z minus z1's modulus, what does it mean? Well, let's try and think about it as vectors for a second. Let's try and work out what is z minus z1. Well, I'm going to have to put somewhere on my, my diagram here. I'm going to have to put this z. Now, remember, this is a general number. It means it could be anywhere. So it doesn't really matter where I put it. I'm just going to put it somewhere for now. And I'm going to call it Z. Remember, this point that I'm drawing in blue is allowed to move wherever it wants to, if it wants to. And this one, as a vector, is Z. It kind of makes sense to describe it as a vector because it has an across and an upwardness. So let's think, what is Z minus Z1? Well, if I rewrite this for a second and I write it as minus Z1 plus Z, that might help us to think about what's going on here. Because if I start at this point here, and I go minus z1 and I plus z, I've actually just described this path of going minus z1 to z. And as you know with vectors, that's the same thing as describing this path that we've got here. So this path is minus z1 plus z, or I could rewrite it as z minus z1. Now, because we're talking about the modulus of this, we're actually saying, what is the length of this line? So in answering this question, what does the modulus of z minus z1 mean? It means it is the length of the line between z and z1, aka it is the distance between z and z1. That is the geometric significance of this. It is the distance between the complex number z and z1. So when we have a look at this thing that we've got here, we're just saying I want z, I want this, sorry, I want the distance between z and z1, which is represented by this yellow section, to be fixed. So here is z1, which is fixed. These are the places where z can be so that its distance is r. One final way I'm going to talk about this interpretation is you can also think to yourself that when you do z minus z1, you're actually, if you if you took this blue um, loci that we've got here, if we subtracted z1 from all of these points, you would end up with a circle that was centred at the origin, which then brings us back to the original form that we had here of just the modulus of z being equal to 3. So you can think about um, the fact that it's, it's being subtracted would bring it to the origin, that the subtraction is the kind of the thing that sends it out to having that as the center. If that third explanation I just gave about sort of bringing it back to the origin by subtracting it doesn't make as much sense, that's perfectly OK. You've got this algebraic explanation here and we've got this geometric or vector type connection that I've explained for you here. But this is super, super important. Z minus Z1, what does this mean? It means it's the distance between the complex number that's allowed to move and the complex number that is fixed. So that's the theory behind this circle part. In the next video I'm going to do for you, I'm going to go through some examples and we're going to see how this all connects together.